Section 5-6 is about inequalities in one triangle. And to begin, I want to introduce you to a property of inequalities that we'll use a few times in this lesson. It's called the comparison property of inequality. And what it says is if A is equal to B plus C, and C is bigger than 0, then we know that A has to be bigger than B. So let me give you an example. 7 we know is equal to 2 plus 5 and 5 is bigger than 0. So 7 must be bigger than 2. Okay. Now I know that seems really simple and maybe not even very useful, but it will be useful and we'll see how that is useful to us um, in the next slide. But the reason why it works is because 5 is bigger than 0. Okay. In this case C is bigger than 0. So if I eliminate 5 I've lessened this side of, of the equation. And because I lessen that side, 7 must be bigger than 2. Okay, here's another example. 3 is equal to negative 1 plus 4. And 4 is bigger than 0. So if I eliminate 4, I know that 3 must be bigger than negative 1. Okay, because I've lessened this side. Now let's see why that's useful to us um, in the corollary to the triangle exterior angle theorem. Now, before we talk about the corollary, let's remember what the triangle exterior angle theorem said. Um, looking at this picture, we know that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Okay, Or in other words, the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Okay. Now, we know that the measure of angle 2 will always be bigger than 0 because it's an angle. And we also know the measure of angle 3 will also be bigger than 0 because it's also an angle. So, by the, the property of inequalities we just talked about, I know that the measure of angle 1 is bigger than the measure of angle 2 and the measure of angle 1 is bigger than the measure of angle 3. Okay, so that's using that property we just talked about. Um, and I can conclude uh, this. Now let's see how that's used in a problem. Um, using this figure at the right, why is the measure of angle 2 bigger than the measure of angle 3? Okay, well, um, I know that I'm looking for exterior angles. So I'm looking at angle 1. The measure of angle 1 um, must be bigger than the measure of angle 3 by that corollary we just talked about. Okay, now looking at this triangle down here, um, I notice that it is an isosceles triangle. And I know that in an isosceles triangle, the base angles, meaning angles 1 and 2, must be congruent. So I know that the measure of angle um, 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2 by the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, now, since the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, I can substitute this into this equation, and I get that the measure of angle 2 is bigger than the measure of angle 3. Okay? The next topic to discuss is about theorems 5-10 and 5-11. Now, to explain those, I built a triangle and have measured all the side lengths and all the angles. And there are things I want you to notice about side lengths and angles and how they're related. Okay? Now, notice that AB is the longest side length. And across from it, angle C is the largest angle. Okay? And that will always happen in a triangle. CA is the side length that's in the middle. And it's across from the angle that's in the middle. Finally, segment BC is the shortest side length, and it's across from the angle that's the smallest angle. Okay? And that relationship will always happen. That's kind of 
what Theorem 5-10 and 5-11 say. So here's Theorem 5-10, and it says if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the larger angle is opposite the longer side. Okay? So let's use um, Theorem 5-10. And it, this problem says, a town park is triangular. A landscape architect wants to place a bench at the corner with the largest angle. Which two streets form the corner with the largest angle? Well, I know from Theorem 5-10 that the largest angle is across from the longest side. So the longest side would be this one. So across from it would be right here is where the park bench should be placed. So the question asks, which two streets form that corner? And the answer would be um, Martin Luther King Boulevard and Valley Road. Theorem 5-11 is kind of the opposite of, of the idea we talked about a little bit ago. If two angles of a triangle are not congruent, then the longer side is opposite the larger angle. So now I'm using angles to tell me about lengths of sides. Using theorem 5-11, which choice shows the sides of triangle TUV in order from shortest to longest? Well, the first thing I need to do is to find that third side, sorry, the, the third angle. And I'll find that by adding up these two angles, 58 plus 62, is 120, okay? And subtracting that from 180, so 180 minus 120 is 60. So this angle up here must be 60 degrees. Okay, so I want to find the side lengths in order from shortest to longest. Okay, so the shortest side length will be opposite the shortest, the, sorry, the smallest angle. Here's the smallest angle, so across from it is TV. So TV must be the shortest um, side length. In the middle would be 60 degrees, and so opposite it would be this, the, the middle side, UV, which leaves the largest angle across from the largest side, TU, or UT. Okay? So the answer would be A, and that's how you find um, the side lengths in order from shortest to longest and how to use theorems 5-10 and 5-11. The next topic to discuss is the triangle inequality, which I think is a pretty important and also a pretty powerful theorem that we have in geometry. And to explain it, I've built a triangle and have measured the three sides. Okay. Now, what I want you to notice is that the, the smaller two sides added together is bigger than the longest side. So however, however I move this, that those two smaller sides will always add to be bigger than the longest side. Now which sides are the, are the, which side is the longest may change, but however you move it, the shorter two sides added together will be bigger than the longest side. And that's what the triangle inequality says that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. Now, before we use that theorem, I want to briefly explain why that happens. Okay, now, this diagram may be a little confusing, um, and if so, then don't worry about it. Um, but what I've built here is that this is the longest side of the triangle. Okay, and the other two sides purposely add up to be less than that longest side. Now, however I move these two sides, they will never touch, and they'll never form a triangle. But if I make these sides longer so they overlap, meaning that the length of the two sides are bigger than the third side, then you can see in, in red here that a triangle is formed, okay? because those two sides now can, can touch and create a triangle. Okay, so if the lengths of the two shorter sides added together are bigger than the longest side, then a triangle can be formed from those three sides. And that's why the, the um, triangle inequality works. Now let's use this um, inequality 
Now the question is, can a triangle have sides with the given lengths? Um, 3, 7, and 8. Now the, the triangle inequality says any two lengths added together is larger than the third one. But the one that's most important to us are the shortest two. So I'm only going to look at those. So the shortest two, 3 and 7, 3 plus 7, is that greater than 8 is the question. All right, well, 3 plus 7 is 10, and 10 is bigger than 8. And so the answer is yes, a triangle can be formed using these two lengths. The next question, 5, 10, and 15, the shortest two are 5 and 10. 5 plus 10, is that bigger than 15? Well, 5 plus 10 is 15, which is not bigger than 15. It's equal to it. So the answer would be no. Okay. And our last problem, um, in the solve it, you explored the process of dimensions of a triangular sandbox. Two of the sides are 5 feet and 8 feet long. What is the range of possible lengths for the third side? Okay, now this can get a little, a little complicated. Um, now that third side, you can think of it as either being really short or really long. Okay, I'll first think of it as being short. Okay, I'll think of it as being the shortest side, and I'll call it x, 5, and 8. Okay, now the sum of the two shorter sides, x being one of the shorter sides, would be x plus 5 must be bigger than 8. Okay, now I will subtract 5 from both sides of this inequality, and x must be bigger than 3. Okay, so if x was any smaller than 3, um, it'd be too short to form a triangle. So x must be bigger than 3. Okay, I will next think about um, that third side as being very long, that it's the longest side. So 5, 8, and I'll call it y this time. So I know that the sum of the smaller 2 is bigger than the third side. So 5 plus 8 must be bigger than y or 5 plus 8 is 13, must be bigger than y. Okay, Meaning that 13 is the longest that y can be. And if it was any longer, we could no longer make a triangle. So the range of possible lengths for this third side is between 3 and 13 would be the answer.